So if the numbers are correct and the numbers are coming directly from Samsung and why we should not trust any company when they're announcing a new product in terms of numbers. But anyway, if this is correct and we're talking about 2000 nits or more peak brightness on the QD OLED TVs in combination with the great color performance, then indeed LG is in big trouble. Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Markus and this is great news in my opinion because 2000 nits peak brightness on QD OLED TVs. This sounds absolutely amazing because the color performance on the QD OLED displays is outstanding compared to the WRGB OLED TVs. And yes, I'm very well aware that also LG announced today that their TVs will have a maximum peak brightness of around 2000 nits in the vivid mode, 1800 nits in the normal mode. But we're still talking about the problem with the color performance on WRGB OLED TVs. And yeah, when we compare the color performance between QD OLED and WRGB, there's a big difference. And that's what probably is the biggest advantage from Samsung. But not just the color performance on Samsung TVs are much better actually compared to WRGB OLED TVs. Also screen uniformity is just better when we actually comparing those two technologies or especially when we're comparing LG OLED TVs like the LG G2 with a Samsung S95B or A95K. My G2 suffers not a lot but it's suffering from this pink tint issue where you have on the left hand side you have this pinkish yeah, tint and it is noticeable doing viewing content. Doesn't matter what I'm watching, Netflix, gaming or whatever, it is noticeable in some scenes. Okay, I hope this will be fixed this year by LG. Otherwise, Samsung is clearly better when it comes to screen uniformity. The next thing where I think Samsung is ahead is pricing because always when I'm comparing LG with Samsung or any other TV brand with Samsung, Samsung is slightly cheaper and this is also a big advantage of Samsung. In terms of the gaming features, Samsung is not bad, but LG is still better for me at least because HDIG support is very important for me. And yes, I know there is something like a HDIG compatible mode on the Samsung TVs, but it's not the same. The only way where you can watch or enjoy HDIG content is on LG TVs. And this is still, in my opinion, it's a big disadvantage on the Samsung TVs. And when we now start talking about software, software updates on Samsung TVs, then this is really, really bad. And I just hope that we will see an improvement over the time or in the next year, because it's really, really bad. My Q95B still has not the same HDR performance before this stupid update. That's how it is. LG is just so much better, but that's not really what counts when it comes to what people are actually buying because they're just seeing a picture and right now Samsung is offering just the, how should I say, the more vivid picture and I'm not saying about or I'm not saying that Samsung has the more accurate picture. Now that's why I use the term or the word vivid because this is what people seeing first. You know, they're walking into the shop and seeing a very vivid picture because of the great color performance and maybe because of the settings as well on the TV. And that's what people buy. And this is what LG can't offer. There is not such a great color performance compared to Samsung. But in terms of software, firmware updates and calibration, Samsung's TVs are actually miles behind LG. Because when we're talking about calibration, then Samsung is just really, really bad. And I'm very polite right now because what I have experienced with my Q95B compared with the LG G2 or CX, it's like day and night. And I'm not talking about the outcome later on because you can get both TVs or yeah, you can get the Q95B and also my G2 or CX to the same outcome, like D65 or whatever. But how to get there and how much work you need to invest, that's a big, big difference. And this is very important for me because I'm doing a lot of testing. I'm doing a lot of testing in terms of HDR content, 
different color temperatures and stuff like that. And this is where Samsung is lacking or is way behind LG. But anyway, 2000 nits on a QD OLED TV in combination with the great color performance, I'm looking forward to see one in real life because I still think the QD OLED display technology is just much better than WRGB. I mean, we haven't seen the new MLA display technology from LG side by side with a QD OLED TV so far, but I still think Samsung is ahead of that. But also there are some disadvantages on Samsung's side, like the very bad um, yeah, black performance actually when you watch uh, the TV in a brighter room because it's not getting as dark as on WRGB OLED TV because of the missing layers on the Samsung TV. But that's something maybe Samsung is already working on it in the background. We don't know yet. Anyway, great news. We're getting more or brighter TVs in 2023, which was to expect actually. And believe me, it is a good thing. And no, 2000 nits, and I already actually explained this in my last video about the LG um, announcement. 2000 nits on a TV is nothing. We will need much more peak brightness to display HDR properly. Thank you very much for watching me. I see you guys next time. Bye.